C-Suite Radio. Welcome to Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Today, we're going to wind down 2020, and isn't it about time? Uh, this is our last show before the new year, and we're going to unwrap a treat for you today. Cornette's very own Whit Heiler will be with us. He is one of Adweek's Creative 100 and has been offered up by Digiday as the most talented creative in America. He is Cornette's Executive Creative Director and will join us in just a moment to talk about creativity, the process of coming up with creative ideas, how COVID has changed creativity for brands, and a lot more. Also on the show, I want to tell you about a new website and platform I've discovered for finding, organizing, and staying plugged into podcasts. Podcast apps are built for subscribing and playing, but this service is kind of like a flipboard for podcasts, and they have a pro version which allows brands and agencies to get the all-elusive podcast demographics, so stay tuned for that. And finally on the program today, a friend shared uh, some insight with me recently that I thought was worth sharing. It's the secret to why TikTok is both addictive and different than other social networks. All of that and more coming up on Digging Deeper. As you are aware, we're broadcasting today on the interwebs on seven different channels, thanks to our friends at Restream. That software, everyone, uh, makes live streaming accessible to everyone and is as easy as a phone call, but not just live streaming in one place, but everywhere your audience might be. I'm actually going to share my screen here so you can see what Restream looks like while we are doing the show. Let me see if I can hit a button. And there's that and there's this. And so what you're seeing here is, if you can see my mouse, these are all the networks we're connected to on Restream right now. We've got uh, my Facebook brand page, Cornette, Cornette's Facebook page, my Facebook personal profile, the Digging Deeper YouTube channel, LinkedIn, uh, the Cornette page on LinkedIn, and then Periscope puts uh, this show on Cornette's channel and on the Jason Falls Twitter feed. So we're on Twitter as well. And this is sort of where I'm able to make sure the show is going. If I click a button and go over into the live studio, which I don't want to do because I've got it over here on my other screen, I can actually see people who are commenting. I can you know, hit the buttons to control uh, what you're seeing on the screen and all that good stuff. So this is what Restream looks like when you are uh, in it and, uh, and, and using the software uh, connecting to all these different channels. The cool news about Restream, though, is you also have a live studio uh, production suite, which is what I'm looking at on my other screen, which allows me to, you know, hit buttons and, and put up graphics and things like that. So if I wanted to come over here and make sure that I put up a little lower font, I could put up Jason Falls Cornette. If I wanted to tell you where you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, I've got a button to click to make that come up on the screen. Uh, I can even do cool things like uh, bring wit onto the thing and so he can wave and say hello so he'll be on here in just a second <laughs> and so wit will be back with us in a minute but uh, basically uh, restream goes uh, it, it helps you not only produce what you're doing on a live stream uh, like what i just showed you but it helps you distribute that to as many as 20 different places at once. They connect to 30 different social networks. So you can't go to 30, you can go to 20, but you can go to 20 places on as many as 30 different sites. Um, and then I think there's only a couple, like LinkedIn only allows you to go to one place. So we do the Cornette LinkedIn channel. Um, the others though, you could see we went, we go to three places on Facebook. We go to two places on Twitter via Periscope. So it allows you uh, to distribute your live stream in a bunch of different places on the internet so that you can be where your audience is. Um, and here's a little content magic for you. Download the recording of your live stream, which Restream archives for you, pull off the audio, and voila, you have a podcast. No extra work, really, other than uploading the audio to your podcast service. That's exactly what we do here at Digging Deeper. The live stream audio goes up on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. Uh, I think we're on Pandora now. So we go to a lot of different places for an audio podcast so that you can reach your audiences 
even after the fact in On Demand. If you want to subscribe to Digging Deeper, you can go to cornet.online slash digging deeper in case you ever miss any of our live shows. Restream's plan start at $19 per month. You can upgrade to premium pricing and reach 20 networks at once. Very important though, since you heard about it here, we want to make sure that you use the special URL to go find out more so that they know that you came from Digging Deeper. So if you go to jason.online slash restream, there you can explore the tool, sign up, and they'll know you came through this program. It helps us let them know how their sponsorship of the program is paying dividends for them. So go to jason.online slash restream. And if you're dialing into the live broadcast via LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, thanks to Restream, you can jump in the comment section there or hit at reply on Twitter to ask questions and interact with us here on the show. I know Wit is excited to hear your questions about creativity and beyond. So jump in the comments, say hello and ask your question. I'll do my best to look over and surface that as we move along in the program today. Okay, everyone, let's unwrap the gift that is Wit Heiler. He is Cornette's Executive Creative Director, one of Adweek's uh, Creative 100, and always keeps the room lively. Good morning, Wit. How are you? Hey, what's up, Jason? <laughs> is that too loud for you? No, you're, you're just fine. You're just fine. <laughs> So let, let's talk about creativity and creative. You've become known in the, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was wondering, Jason, could we start this with a prayer? We can. All right, let's just, let's close our eyes real quick and we'll just say a little prayer before we get started, okay? Okay, you go right ahead. All right, Lord and Jason, the other big man, we love you. And Lord, we just, we pray, you know, Jason's got a new book coming out and we just pray that you give him the same power that you gave Jeff Bezos, JK Rollins to sell billions of books so we can become a billionaire and buy billions of big golds all across America. Keep 7-Elevens, keep their lights on. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Wow. Bless, God bless this podcast. I'm not this sure is, there's not sure there's ever been anything so sacrilegious on this show. Thank you for that. It's Wit. not sacrilegious. I'm being serious. Okay. Well, I want to become a billionaire too. So thank you. I appreciate the. I'm just, I'm just sending blessings over your book. Okay. Well, I, I'm sure the audience appreciates you doing that to kick off our little chat today. Have you, has anyone ever done that on your show? No, that's a first. This, that's the first blessing. Probably it's the first, ble first prayer, first blessing. Uh, probably not the first time the Lord has ever come up in conversation, but pretty close to it. So yeah, it's a, it's right. a day of firsts and it's I the just, holiday season. Why not? Yeah, it's the holidays. Okay. <laughs> so now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about creativity. Oh, also, I did, like you requested, I brought one apple and one banana. Okay. I don't know what you have planned for me to do with that, but we can talk about it later. Sorry. Just, just, just random nourishment. So uh, let's talk about creativity and creative. Uh, you've you've become known in the advertising world as one of the top creative thinkers in the business, and that's certainly well beyond the walls for Cornette. I'm curious uh, what you define as strong creative in today's market. What impresses you? Um. You know, Jason, what I love, the kind of creative that makes me jealous is, you know, is that creative that everybody talks about? Um, you know, that, that creative that gets all the press and everybody, um, you know, is sharing it on social media, the stuff that's, that's never been done, um, you know, that's off the wall, that's entertaining. Um, I like all that stuff. That's the kind of creative that uh, gets me really excited and makes me really wish that I had made it. Well, and 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 may is there are there an example or two that you could share with us of stuff out there that you've seen recently that you're like, man, I wish I had made that. Um. <laughs> Yeah, you're putting me on the spot, but I guess that's, that's what podcasts are all about, right? That's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, you know, I've I've really enjoyed a lot of these kind of branded, goopy products that that folks have been throwing out there. Um, 
you know, that stuff is always fun. It's entertaining. It gets a lot of press, gets, you know, gets people laughing. Like Arby's made that like turkey pillow. Yep. That you put over your head. I thought that was pretty clever. And <laughs> um, that was pretty funny there. I don't know. There's, a, there's some other stuff. You know, I'm always sharing that all this stuff I like out on the slack for some reason i just can't think of much of it right now yeah it's uh, our that turkey pillow we do have a, an internal slack channel or several of them where wit shares various ideas with the team and it's always amusing to go through that well one one of the uh uh you know sort of crazy ideas that got a lot of press that uh is largely you know because of your creative direction and work uh you know was for visit lex this past year about a year ago uh nay smr tell us a little bit about where that came from Oh yeah, that was really fun. Um, so, I mean, it came from just a YouTube trend. Um, you know, it's kind of we were brainstorming some, you know, making some some new content and videos for Visit Lex, and uh, happened to jump on this article about YouTube trends, and um, ASMR popped up, which is. Uh, it's like seems to be like a top three trend every year on YouTube. People love the ASMR, the oddly satisfying videos. And and um, with Visit Lex, you know, we're, we're all about promoting Lexington, Kentucky. And specifically, it's horses and it's bourbon. I mean, those are the two unique um, attractions that Lexington has. Um, that you know that you can find here that you really can't find anywhere else mm -hmm. in the world we're like the napa valley but with the bourbon and then we're surrounded by you know 400 beautiful horse farms we've got all the horses so we kind of always look for ways to like amplify the fact that we're the horse capital of the world or we're the bourbon destination you need to know about <clears throat> and so you know we do a lot of fun things with horses and um you know kind of thought that it would be fun if we played on that ASMR trend, but did it with a horse. Yep. And uh, so we partnered with uh, our friends at the Kentucky Horse Park. They had this, they have this really great horse, Hank, which we've used for some other videos. Hank is like a really good actor horse. You know what I'm saying? Actor horse, Jason? Mm -hmm. yep. You know about I, those actor horses? I got you. Like Mr. Ed and stuff? Yeah, yeah. He's he's like that. And um, so we went out there, set up a little studio, and Hank ate some carrots and some apples and ate all this food, and we made this video. Um, and, you know, it, I, was, I was really – I mean, you always set out to make a, make a good video. You know, you don't set out to make a bad video, but you never know how it's going to turn out. Some are, some are good, some are bad. Uh, but this one came out really great. I mean, it was like a perfect ASMR. We actually, we, we called it Nay SMR because of the horse and the nays. Um, but yeah, it was launched it, got some amazing press, and then it just kind of took off on YouTube and landed on the front page of YouTube several times. And it's got several million views, really fun video, but you know, they, we kind of sold it as, you know, um, Visit Lex was the first, you know, the first tourism <laughs> brand to get into, you know, ASMR and yep. we did it with a horse. And, uh, you know, we also sold it as, um, you know, when you're looking at a destination, you know, the the sounds isn't something that people promote, you know, it's like you, typically the sites and, you know, that kind of stuff. So we, you know, it was a fun play on the sounds. Yeah, and you one, can come here and experience that. 1.9 million views so far, not bad, you know, for a CVB of a, you know, a, me, a medium sized city in, in, in the bluegrass in Kentucky. So nice, uh, nice thing to brag about uh, for for you and certainly the rest of the coordinate team. I, I, I know you, you've mentioned this a couple of times already, uh, you know, creative ideas that get press. 
And I know you've got a couple of litmus tests that you've used over the years to determine if your ideas are up to snuff. And I think, you know, that one is is anchored in your work is whether or not the idea is going to get media attention. Where, you know, take us through that thinking. Where, where does that come from? Um, oh, by the way, Chip said in the comments that this is the weirdest episode you've ever had. Yep. Well, Chip would know. He's seen them all. So <laughs> I love you, Chip. Yeah. And real, real quickly, while we're while we're doing that, we have to say hello to everybody. So uh, Izzy House is here. She says good morning. Uh, Chip's, of course, here. Uh, Mac Childs is here. Good morning, Wit. What's he up, says. Mac? Uh, Kevin Dugan uh, asks if laying of hands is next. So obviously referring to the uh, the prayer. Mac the Duganator the joined us. Yeah, Hell yeah. Yeah. The Duganator. How about that? He's a, he's a big shot. He's a legend out there. Uh, uh, Dixie Gilbert says, uh, uh, Witt is not an authorized preacher. I think we could all probably assume that. Uh, and then, uh, Mistress Christmas is here. I don't, some, someone from Twitter, Mistress or, or Periscope, Mistress Christmas says that was clearly definitive. Laura Merchant says, good morning too. Hello, Laura. She's on. What's up, Laura? Yeah. Uh, okay, so let, let's so take us back through that press idea. You, your, your, you, your litmus test. One of your litmus tests is whether or not a creative idea is going to get press coverage. Is it, is it, where does it come from? And then is it press coverage in, like, just the trades, or is it elsewhere? You know, it's really just about getting more bang for your buck. Um, you know, you, we're in advertising. We create ads that. Um, Typically, you know, we put money behind to, you know, gain awareness for the brands we work with or gain sales, whatever, you know, that that goal may be. But I, I just think it's always really nice when you can kind of take that idea to the, you know, push it to that next level where it is worthy, where somebody would actually write about it. Because, you know, if somebody's going to write about it, then somebody else would probably be willing to share it. Um, so then it's just, it, you're just getting more bang for the buck. And I think that's, that's great. Um, I used to, I, years ago, I started a, like a, like a clothing business, like a t-shirt company type thing. It's no longer in existence. Rest did in it, peace. Did it, did it ever have cool Christmas shirts like gangster rapper? No, it didn't have any cool shirts like that. That's why it, that's why it failed. But it it was <laughs> it was there for a second. But you know, I like thought it was gonna be big, and um, I you know I put all my money into like the products, and then was like just figured you know I was naive. I figured I'd put it out there on the internet, and everybody would just come and buy it. But then in reality, you know, I put it on the internet, and then just nobody came and bought it. So. And I didn't have money to, you know, to advertise. So I had to get really creative and really scrappy, you know, to like come up with ideas to, you know, raise awareness for this brand. And um, and we did something, uh, you know, we did several different things that got some big press. We had an article in the New York Times and stuff, but I don't know, it kind of like kind of opened my eyes to the power of an idea and, you know, how... You could take a little idea here in Kentucky, put it out there on the internet, and you know everybody in the world could know about it. So, um, you know, and I'm pretty obsessive, addictive personality. It also kind of like sparked an obsession and a, a you know an addiction of sorts with um, chasing ideas and chasing ideas that get get press and and that kind of high that comes with it you know what i'm talking about jay bird i do i i i know a little thi thing or two about feeling high uh sometimes because of ideas so yes thank you that's that's good um so uh in, in the midst of of your uh you know recent you know sort of a series of successes uh with creative ideas covid came in and changed the game for a lot of brands and agencies now, I know you've been obviously leading the creative charges on the Visit, account, Visit Lex account here at Cornette. You know, it's a CVB that derives funding through heads and beds. And when travel is all but prohibitive, uh, prohibited, uh, that poses significant challenges. We've had Gaithan Borden, our client, the VP for marketing at Visit Lex here on the show before to talk about how they navigated those waters. But I'd love to hear from you, your, from your perspective, 
has this been, you know, like a, a, a Sisyphus like task pushing the boulder up the hill? And, and how have you attacked the problem of, of coming up with creative ideas in a world where you've got guardrails on that you didn't have just months before? Yeah, um, man, I mean, tourism is tough right now. You know, visit Lex. The, you know, by the way, Lexington just got named uh, one of travel and leisure's top 50 places to visit in 2021, um, which is a huge accolade. I mean, that's awesome, you know, and that's a great way to end 2020, which has been a tough year on tourism. But, um, you know, anybody that's watching from out of state, or you're in state and not living in Lexington, you should come give visit, Le you know, come give Lexington a visit. It's one of the top 50 places to visit in the world in 2021. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's been a, been a tough, tough year for, for tourism and travel. And, um, you know, visit Lex is a big, big supporter of the community here in Lexington. Um, I mean, they're, they're wonderful members of the community. They, you know, they, they help everybody. They sponsor everything. They help everybody. Um, so they've done a lot of helping this year. I mean, you know, it's like, um, and that's one of the great things about, you know, Visit Lex. It's like, they're just, they're just always there to, to lend a helping hand, but they've done a lot of things to promote, you know, the local restaurants, just constantly trying to do things to, to drive, you know, folks to get hotel rooms, whether you live out of state or you're in state taking staycations. Um, you know, they've, they've been a part of that nourish program, which, which, yep. um, which we helped out with that website and stuff. Um, so they've done a ton and we, you know, we've helped them create a lot of videos, mask PSAs, um, carry out PSAs, um, you know, we just made one called the gift of time that was around encouraging locals to give hotel rooms as a, you know, like gift certificates to hotel rooms as a holiday gift. Um, so yeah, a lot of that, but, um, but at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, we, we kind of focused on promoting you know local businesses and and local people through you know you were a part of that we did a lot of live streams we you know you had programmed out um days weeks with with special guests and different events and um and that was really great and then we also focused on it just entertaining um you know we did a we did a zoom where we had a horse join us folks could you know, could come and Zoom with a horse. And that was kind of early on with Zoom. You know, nobody, you know, since then, there's been a lot of animals on Zoom and a lot of weird things done with Zoom. But at that time, there hadn't really been a lot. But we partnered up with Mill Ridge Farm and um, Price Bell got on there with like a, a, a mama horse and some baby horses and folks could join that Zoom. And he talked talk to them about, you know, that the horse business and these horses. It's really fun. Um, it got, got some great press, but I think that was kind of a, a fun little thing. We made coloring books. Um, we did, you know, we just, we did a lot of, lot of, lot of things to entertain folks. And then when, um, things opened back up this summer, we launched a campaign that was, you know, had a number of different videos, you know, like five or six different videos or some print ads, there's really beautiful postcards. Um, but it was all about uh, coming here to Lexington to enjoy our wide open spaces. You know, everybody had been cooped up all spring and um, it was a really fun play on, you know, your life in quarantine, you know, versus coming here to Lexington enjoying our wide open spaces. Like we did this one ad that uh, said, come take an online Zoom course. And it had like, somebody like zipping through the tree canopies on a zip line. Mm -hmm. And then we had another, you know, video that was like somebody that was uh, canoeing down a stream here at Canoe Kentucky on the Elkhorn Creek. And it said now streaming. And then, you know, the sub copy was, was around how you've been streaming, you know, Netflix and HBO max and all these other like 
streaming services for the last six months. You need to get the hell out of the house and come enjoy some some beautiful <laughs> Kentucky landscapes. Uh, there was one that was called a Stable Connection that had like these women like petting a horse and and um, it was all about like having you know a crappy connection in your home, you know. And I don't know, it was, it was a really fun campaign, but. Um, yeah, it was good. And, and and I wanted to kind of underline that because it, it wasn't about, you know, shutting down. It was about finding creative ways to continue to push the envelope for the client, which is something that I've always admired in, in how you approach things. So there, there's a, a lot of brands out there who wish they were more creative and some agencies probably too. Um, now, you not only have to hire creatives, copywriters, art directors, designers and beyond, but you have to manage what accounts they work on, what kind of work they're assigned to do. What do you think are the important qualities to look for in creatives today from a hiring perspective? What do your ideal candidates look like? Um, yeah, I think that. I mean, we all, you know, like I, I, have, I have a partner here at Cornette, Tim. Uh, Jones, um, he's such a sexy man. Tim Jones, has, you know, have, you need to have Tim on the show. We will eventually. <laughs> um, he's got this long, beautiful hair and, you know, it's, but he's, he's, um, he's a, like a fantastic designer, you know, and I come from like more of an, a writing and idea background. He comes from the, you know, more of that uh, design background. So it's, we complement each other. And I think we both look for, for different things in hiring. Um, we always kind of look for people that just, you know, that think about things a little bit differently, you know, that um, I like, I like folks with a good sense of humor. I mean, I think that is really important in advertising. I mean, some of the the best ideas I've ever been a part of have started as a joke. You know, we all kind of, we're in a brainstorming meeting and somebody throws something out there that's just ridiculous and we all laugh our asses off. And then it's like, <laughs> oh wait, we should consider that. You know, like if we think it, if we all think it's funny, then there's a good chance that everybody outside this room is going to think it's funny too. So maybe we should make that a strong consideration. But I, yeah, I think a sense of humor is good. Um, I think, you know, persistence is, is good. Um, I think that's a great quality. Look for somebody that's persistent, um, that, you know, that's able to, to sell their ideas and if they're passionate about it to really, really sell it you know i think that's an important trait um just good people you know it's nice to work with good people we don't want any any bad people uh, uh chip chip chimes in now we know how jason got hired you're sitting around laughing what if we hired jason <laughs> that's, um, that's, that's good that's good chip chip tries to yeah. break me up on the show that's good that's that's a nice effort there chip i appreciate you that. know yeah I mean, experience is great, but it's also kind of you don't have to have experience to do what we do. Yeah, you have to have experience to design, come up with ideas. I didn't have any experience. <laughs> yeah, your background is. Uh, I mean, you talked about the clothing line, but what was your what was your career before you became an, a creative at Cornette? Um, well, was at Chippendale, my teens. Did a lot of dancing for money. Um, I worked in the car business for for a number of years. That's, that's where then, I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then um, and then I had that clothing business. Rest in peace. I was also <laughs> a partner in a in a Vespa scooter shop. There you go. Rest in peace. Needed <laughs> needed money. Got into advertising. Still here. <laughs> It seems like a an, a, a, a an oddly circuitous path to get the money, but okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I yeah, I just I kind of like I had um I had it's funny, yeah. I just I had started a couple businesses that just didn't do great, and then got in a position where I needed needed to make some money. I had a little family going, and Christy was like, "You need to come work here at Cornette." And so I did. And then, you know, it's funny when she, when I got here, she was like, um, she was like, no more starting businesses. 
you're done. <laughs> you know, you're done with businesses. And then like three months into Cornette, I, yep. you know, by accident started another business yep. with the Kentucky for Kentucky. That business is still around. It's been around for 10 years now. So that one's stuck. <laughs> there you go. You you had the uh, the lessons learned to actually you know pull it off and pull it together. And Kentucky for yeah. Kentucky is, is uh, uh, why a lot of people, at least outside of Lexington or outside of Cornette, it's why a lot of people know you uh, because that started with the Kentucky for Kentucky uh, Kentucky Kicks Ass campaign uh, back in the day. Am I am I mistaken in in that that did not uh, did did that not stem from a uh, a CVB type pitch that that Cornette didn't get is that is that the truth to that story? No, that okay. is totally untrue, Jason. Um, so it actually, I'd been at Cornette for several months. I came to Cornette. I was working in new business. Mm -hmm. um, it's ten years ago. I've been here for ten years. Ten years in November. Nice. And um, came on as new business. Um, I was sitting sitting around one night. It was like about three months into working here was at home. I was with my buddy Griffin. And we were watching football or something like that. And, you know, Super Bowl coming up, you know, in February. This was like in December. And at that same time, like Kickstarter had become really popular. Mm -hmm. Now it's, you know, it's like GoFundMes and Kickstarters are a household name. Back then, that was like when they were like first, like really getting going. But uh, it started with a joke. I was like, hey, man, we should crowdfund a Super Bowl commercial for Kentucky. And um, like laughed our asses off. And then, and then, you know, it was like, well, we should maybe think about doing that. And we got our buddy Kent involved, who uh, also works in advertising. He was at Crispin Porter at the time. But we just built, we built out this idea to uh, launch a 60-day Kickstarter campaign to crowdfund a $3.5 million commercial, Super Bowl commercial for the state of Kentucky. You know, like kind of the idea was to change, you know, stereotypes and perceptions. and. Um, and yeah, so we did it. And, you know, we kind of, we started a Facebook page. We put together this goofy video and <laughs> threw it out there. And at the end of the 60 days, we had raised like 100,000 of the, the 3.5 needed to, to make a Super Bowl commercial. Didn't quite get there, but it, but it was good. Good effort. <laughs> yeah, but we, you know, we got a lot of people talking about how great Kentucky is. We got a lot of press. It was a big press thing. Um, and so after that, people were asking like, what's next with Kentucky for Kentucky. And then that's when we rebranded the state without the state's permission. <laughs> and, uh, you know, unbridled spirit was out and Kentucky kicks ass. The new slogan was in, um, so yeah, that was that. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't Kentucky for Kentucky. We didn't mean for that to, to start. That wasn't meant to be a business at first. Okay, it was just right. just meant to be like some fun side projects. I was it turned I wasn't, into a business. I wasn't sure of the origin story. I, I assumed a couple of things and wanted to clarify, and you certainly did. Uh, so, real quickly, as we wrap here, if you had to pick one or two things for marketers to focus on in 2021 from a creative standpoint, what do you think they'd be? Um, I mean, I think. I think you should always try and go for the earned media, you know, push your ideas into a place where they're, you know, going to get some, get some love in the press and the social shares. I think that's, that's important. Um, yeah, I think scrappy too. I just get, you know, I think scrappy creative is, uh, is going to be big in, in 2021. Big Excellent. with me every day, but I think it's going to be big. Excellent. Scrappy, well, you're 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 Jason. you're the you're the best I know at being scrappy. So there you go. Um, thank you. That makes me feel so good. And you know what? I just want to give a shout out to Chip. Lots of good like comments in there. Thanks, Chip. I love you, man. <laughs> um, 
Jason, is this all day? Because I kind of blocked my calendar for the whole day. No, I was getting ready to ask you where people could find you online so that you can get on with your day and I could get on with the show. Um, don't find me online. <laughs> I'm, I'm staying offline. I'm just going to be like behind the behind the scenes from here on out. OK, well, you can find Wit or, or find Cornette at teamcornet.com. And uh, I've dropped a link to Wit's LinkedIn if you'd like to connect with him there in the, yeah. uh, in the comments. Wit, thank you so much for uh, entertaining us this morning. And, uh, and thanks for being, you know, a great inspiration and guy to work with. I love working with you. You always make me laugh and inspire good thinking. And uh, that's what the show's all about, making creativity your business advantage. So uh, thanks, man, and happy holidays. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's funny. That's that's kind of a roundabout way of telling me that you love me. Do you think you could just come out and say that you love me? Because I do love you, Jason. I I I love you. How's that? Is that close? Thank you. Yeah. No, it's the holidays. I think we should. Everybody should tell everybody that they love them. Let's fill this holiday full of love. I love you, Jason. I love you back. Thanks. You that you got it? You good? Yeah, I got it, and I love Chip. Okay. Well, I, I love Chip and I love Kevin and I love uh, 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 Mistress Christmas, whoever that is, and uh, yeah. Dixie and, and Mac and, and Mac. Izzy and all, all, all the love people you, that Mac. do this. All right. Wow, this has been great. Okay. I, I, I love you, but you got to go. I just want to hang on and keep chatting all day. Like, let's, I'm, we're rolling now. Why end it when something so special has just begun? Because my goal is to get everybody back to work by nine o'clock and I got two things I got to cover. All right. So, okay. I love you, Wit. I love you too, bro. Bye-bye. See ya. (laughs) Wit Hyler, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Now you see why I love working at Cornette so much. It's every day is entertaining and fun and lively for, uh, you know, because of folks like Wit. So uh, you can uh, click on the, in the, in the comment section, wherever you are. Uh, I've dropped links to Team Cornette where you can find out about the the agency and there's stuff about Wit there too. Uh, But then also Wit on LinkedIn is in the show notes. Ah, Just fun times, fun times. Okay, so uh, as I promised earlier in the show, I have a fun new platform to share with you podcast fans out there. Now, I not only host two podcasts, this one, uh, which becomes a podcast after it's a live stream, uh, and Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, but I really enjoy searching for and discovering new shows. I add them to a temporary listen list, then I move the really good ones to kind of a permanent you know, app where I listen. Um, but that's really the podcasts I listen to for me, for personal reasons. Like, I love Broken Record, the uh, in-depth interview podcast about music from Malcolm Gladwell, Rick Rubin, and Bruce Headlam. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily going to get marketing or business acumen from that. I'm going to explore music and musicians, and I enjoy some, kind of the backstory. I enjoy the in-depth interviews there. But I also listen to podcasts and learn and find out more about marketing, advertising, public relations, SEO, and more. You know, education and learning is not something that ever ends. It's something that you continue to do. And so that's a, a lot of why I, I listen to business podcasts. I've used all the podcast apps, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, and so on. And they're all great for subscribing and listening, but that's it. What most podcast fans are missing is a place to search and discover, but also organize, follow to know where there, when there are new episodes, but not necessarily clutter your listening app or device storage space with unnecessary downloads. Well, that place is here. It's a platform called Podchaser. Uh, instead of talking about it, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to click a button to make that happen. So this is Podchaser. And uh, basically, uh, I've logged in here and I uh, can find shows and subscribe to them so that I get, you know, uh, five hours ago, the James Altucher show released a, a new episode. Now, I don't subscribe to that show uh, on my app, but I know there's a new episode. I can play it right here uh, on the, you know, within the, the page. And this is obviously just the desktop version. Uh, but I can play it here or I can you know, flag it for later or I can add that to sort of my app where I listen to temporary things. But I can see here's you know, a new episode of, of Broken uh, Record came out this morning with Dave Cobb, Nashville Super Producer. So I know that Hidden Brain has a new one out. These are some of the ones that I like to follow for personal reasons, but also for business reasons. I can also rank my favorite 
uh, podcasts. I've got my favorite podcasts ranked up here at the top. I've got History This Week, Hidden Brain, Broken Record, and then I got Selfish. I've got Windfluence and Digging Deeper in there, Revisionist History, Freakonomics, uh, and uh, the last one there is Cautionary Tales, which is another one of the Pushkin podcasts. But you can do all sorts of things as a podcast fan and consumer here. You can bookmark things. You can actually create a list. So I've created a list for the community here for influencer marketing. And of course, I've got Winfluence on that list, but I've got a bunch of other influencer marketing podcasts on here. There's the one from Julius, the one from Isaiah is on here, a bunch of that particular topic. Uh, on this uh, list that I've curated for everyone else to uh, subscribe to if they're interested in that topic. And I can curate, come back and add to that. I could create all sorts of other lists. I can rate episodes or podcasts. I can write reviews of episodes or podcasts. Certainly I can like and follow different things too. But here's where Podchaser gets really cool for brands and agencies. It has a pro plan that gives you access to demographics, opens up the ability to file notes about podcasts, gives you contact information uh, and all sorts more. Let me show you what that looks like. So I've bookmarked some podcasts here. Let's let's say the School of Greatness with Lewis Howes. I'm going to go to that podcast page and I'm thinking, you know, this might be good for uh, my client or me to either pitch ourselves to be a guest on the show or maybe even sponsor if there's that uh, type of sponsored content or placement available. If I hit on insights for pro, now I can see the Podchaser power score, how popular this, this podcast is. I get an estimated number of monthly listeners. I get a gender profile, median age, median income. I get links to social networks. I get the top country, cities, occupations, and interests of their audience. And then down here, there's actually contact information. I probably shouldn't be showing you any of that, uh, but there's contact information so that you can know who to reach out to. Here's the cool thing, though. If there's a demographic or statistic here that I don't know, that I want to know, that I need, I've got a concierge over here as a pro member so I can message Cole and I can say on the School of Greatness, I want to request... Um, Let's see, uh, demographics, and I would like to know more about the household income breakdown of this show. Oh, show. thanks. Now, I've got a concierge with the pro plan and that concierge Cole will get back to me after he has researched that particular topic so that I can have more information that's available to pro listeners. The my notes where you can take a note on a podcast is available to pro listeners as well. So Podchaser allows media planners and buyers and public relations folks uh, to be able uh, to uh, understand more about the podcasts that they're prioritizing, looking at, uh, and potentially using for their clients or their brands. This platform is so useful. I've asked them if I could be an affiliate, and I can count on one hand uh, with fingers left over how many affiliate programs I've ever really been involved with. This is not only useful, but I think it's very needed in the industry. Uh, and so I asked them if I could be an affiliate. So if you go to podchaser.com, uh, or podchaserpro.com slash falls, you can sign up there and make your podcast outreach and media planning more effective. That's the pro version. The podchaser, if you just go to podchaser.com, the platform itself is free for users. So it can be useful to you today. You can get a feel for the platform. And then if you get into a situation where you're trying to make decisions, business decisions around what podcasts to sponsor or support or pitch yourself or your client as a guest for, then you can upgrade to the, the pro account at podchaserpro.com slash falls. Go to that URL so that they know you came from watching this show. That helps them know uh, that we are supporting what they're doing and it can help us to support the show uh, down the road here on Digging Deeper. So podchaser.com or podchaserpro.com slash falls. Check that out. It's fun. I've been playing with it for a couple of weeks now. I think I mentioned it in a question that Izzy asked a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I've actually lo love it so much and think it's so useful for this new era of podcast explosion that we're in that I asked them if I could be an affiliate for them. So go to podchaserpro.com slash falls and check that out. Um, okay, finally today, Wit and I were talking, uh, or we're, we were going to talk about TikTok earlier, but we didn't quite get to that uh, part of the question, or part of the questions I wanted to ask him. Um, but 
uh, because I had that question in my list, it reminded me of a conversation I had with my pal CC Chapman last week. I was interviewing CC for Winfluence, the other podcast I host. That episode comes out tomorrow morning, so keep your eyes open for that. You could go follow the podcast over on Podchaser. Uh, but that episode with CC comes out tomorrow morning on Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. But he and I were talking about TikTok. And he hit on an insight that I guess I never really thought about it until he said it. I kind of knew it, but I didn't really think it through to be able to verbalize it. And I wanted to share it with you. But it's the reason TikTok is as addictive as it is for users. And it's the reason TikTok is so different, uh, an experience for users. CC pointed out that unlike the other news feeds on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and such, TikTok serves you its news feed. Actually, the newsfeed, its algorithm prescribes for you, the individual user, based on your previous app behavior. The idea uh, of that newsfeed is to keep you engaged. Now, think about it. You don't see a feed of the people you follow. You don't see a feed of the brands you follow. Um, you see, a def by default, a feed of what TikTok has determined you should follow and you should like. So CC pointed out that it would be like going to Instagram and immediately being fed posts from the Explore tab. We would riot and yell, bitch and scream if that happened. But TikTok serves that experience up as a default and people love it. It's brilliant. And it's why TikTok from a user experience and engagement perspective will always be superior than other social networks. However, I don't think other social networks should follow suit because, you know, they they have established the my feed first behavior. And again, if we went to Facebook and were fed the most popular posts about our interests rather than weighted posts from people and pages we follow and want to see, we would hate the experience. So I think if anybody tries to match it now, it's going to be too disruptive for them. TikTok nailed it. That's where TikTok has not beat. And that's why it's high time we start finding ways to not just create content on TikTok, but create great content on TikTok that breaks into that feed for our prospective customers. So think about that as you're thinking about TikTok in the course of your, your work in 2021, and that might help you, uh, that insight might help you break through the clutter over there. Okay, uh, we've got some uh, comments here. Chip says, thanks for being you. He loves both of us, me and Wit, I guess. That's great. Uh, Mac Child says, much wit, uh, much love to the family, Wit. Uh, Izzy throws up a big heart, uh, and that's that's great. Um, let's see, uh, Chip, <laughs> I missed this earlier. Who is working? All oh, right, I do have meetings today. Uh, and mind altering substances are encouraged. Thank you all for participating in the show. I certainly am honored you're here and uh, entertained by the uh, sometimes futile, but sometimes somewhat successful attempts to distract me while we're doing the program. I do appreciate you coming by and uh, enjoying your experience here. Uh, with Digging Deeper. So that's it for 2020 for Digging Deeper. We work hard all year at Cornette to take the week between Christmas and New Year's off to spend time with our families. We hope you do the same. From the bottom of my heart and, and on behalf of all my colleagues at Cornette, we do wish you an incredible holiday season and happiest of New Year's. And thank you so much for taking uh, time out of your busy week to spend a little time with us here. We hope the interviews and content you get is useful for you. We hope we're helping you make creativity part of your business advantage. But even if you're just here to harass me in the comments, Chip, we do appreciate you doing so. Uh, thank you all for coming by. Our next program will be Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. We're saying goodbye to 2020 today. We will kick off the new year with kickboxing for reals. Jessica Yarney, the CEO of The Kick House, a fitness and wellness brand, will join me and Christy Heiler on the first episode of the 2021 season of Digging Deeper. Do join us, won't you? That will be at 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube, or of course, later that day on the audio podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. So, hey, Visit Lex even jumped in and said, great insights, Jason and Witt. Wow. Thanks, Visit Lex, for coming in and, uh, and checking us out today. We appreciate you in more ways than we can count, obviously. Okay, we've come to the point of the program where you know it's user error time because Jason has to hit buttons. And when Jason has to hit buttons, well, I have to stop and think about which buttons to hit and all that good stuff. It's time. we got to take us out of here. That's what I'm trying to do is take us out of here. How do I do that? Let's see. Let's do it this way. 
<laughs> That'll do it for this edition of Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. If you like the episode, share it with a friend or colleague who might as well. Digging Deeper is a production of the Cornette Group. Find us online at teamcornette.com. Our executive producer is Kip Cornette. Creative director is Jason Majeski. Associate producers include John Hurston and Ashley Harris. Our theme music is composed by Rex Banner. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, I'll see you on the interwebs.